I we are hello live. Welcome back to another Magnet Monday. Thank you so much for joining us once again. We are so excited. It's the start of a new week and, you know, we are pumped because we have a very special guest today and we cannot wait to hear from her. Hi, good morning, Carrie. Hi, Erica. Hi, Dee. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you having me on. Happy International Women's Day to all of you yes, today. Yes, to all the ladies. <laughs> all right. So today we have the pleasure of having Carrie Heibel Briner with us. She's a passionate life and business coach serving clients to make sure that they fulfill their lives and build their huge business. So Carrie, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, we want to start with, you know, asking you to tell a little bit about yourself so that our audience can get to know you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I am a, um, an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur uh, since I was 22 years of age. So for 22 years, believe it or not, <clears throat> wow. I literally have not really worked for anybody but myself, except for a little bit here and there through college. And then for about a year after college, and I just kind of broke out and decided I wanted to kind of create my own destiny for whatever reason. I'm not sure why I felt compelled to the entrepreneur space, but I'm really grateful for it. So I've spent a lot of time you know, being my own entrepreneur, then I also uh, grew some businesses and helped entrepreneurs grow their businesses through uh, running a brokerage for um, a number of years. I helped grow one of the largest real estate expansion teams, helping entrepreneurs build their own businesses in their local cities. And today I coach entrepreneurs. So um, it's been an interesting journey. Um, it, it all happens for a reason. I believe I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Yes. And I believe everybody is because we are where we are. And so that's where we should be. Um, and I'm really grateful for all of it. I have gone through a lot of personal growth transformation in the years as an entrepreneur. I struggled a lot with overworking, having a hard time balancing life and business. And so that's a little bit of my personal story. So I became super um, passionate about helping other entrepreneurs um, and, you know, sometimes it's working moms, sometimes it's just entrepreneurs trying to make sure that they're, uh, you know, building their business and still having a good life. Um, but at the end of the day, there is a bit of a disconnect, I think, that people have, excuse me, <clears throat> between running a very successful business and having a really fulfilled life. It's like, it feels like we have to have one or the other, or something's always got to give. And there are moments when you're going to be spending more time in one space. I believe that. But generally, when you look at your life, I, I know because I've been able to go through this transformation, it's possible. And so I'm very passionate about that. Wow. That's awesome. That is yes. fantastic. That's awesome I, that you said that, yeah. Carrie, because you, you know, um, just to, to go back to the beginning of what you said, you mentioned that you've been an entrepreneur for 22 years. So you were an entrepreneur before it was hot, because I feel like <laughs> everyone now is an entrepreneur. Everyone you is. Know? <laughs> yeah. So you have the experience and you can really tell us like how to be an mm -hmm. entrepreneur and grow a business and you can give us all the tips. So I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's exactly. interesting is that when I started as an entrepreneur, there was really no social media, right? There wasn't right. like all the opportunity for online businesses. So if you were going to be an entrepreneur, it was like a local business, right? It was something local to you because there was really no way to kind of stretch out. Um, Facebook literally was just kind of starting to be a thing at the very early stages, but not even really used that much yet. And so I've learned a lot over the 22 years, obviously technology and online presence and all the things I'm still growing mm -hmm. in those areas because I didn't necessarily start out with that. But I do believe that there's a value in not starting out in that space because I had to learn the fundamentals that I think still people absolutely need to use in their business and then add in everything else. Right. Mm -hmm. So the fundamentals and the foundation of business should be there. So I'm grateful awesome. that I started when I did because I was kind of forced to, yes. to those fundamentals. No, and, and I love what you said, because, um, you know, what you said is so true that we are here now in this moment, and this is exactly what we need to be. And, um, you know, I, I love that about you. Uh, I've been listening to you in Clubhouse, which I love Clubhouse, by the way. And Best that's where ever. you and I got connected. I love the way every morning you speak into the coffee room in the mornings. 
and you speak to everyone and you speak the truth. And that's what, what I like about you so much is that we're here now, we're here in this moment, you know? So if you can talk to us a little bit about that, I know we, uh, as mom, as a woman entrepreneur, you know, we're always trying to struggle or personal life if we find balance or not. And that's something that our audience really, you know, really need to know because I feel like there's no balance. But if it's not in my calendar, if it's not in my book, <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm not going to attend, you know? That's exactly right. True. So it's so true. So what I feel like happened to me, and I think this resonates with a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, is we um, we have this passion for our business, which we should, and we um, it makes us feel happy, fulfilled. We're growing in new ways because we're overcoming business challenges. By the way, innately as human beings, we have a need to grow. We have a need yes. to yeah. um, to grow ourselves personally. And one way we do that is we go to business to do that because business is a way that we can improve, grow our skills, learn more, become better, learn how to build a business. And so we become drawn to that because it fulfills this innate need and it makes us feel good about ourselves. It makes us feel confident. Um, it feel, makes us feel worthy. For many of us as women, it also makes us feel a contributing part of our family, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the society in a different way. And I think that that's, we should be proud of that. We shouldn't be yeah. ashamed of that. By the way, I think a lot of moms are ashamed of that. I was, I mean, I kind of had this, this tug of war from the very beginning that I decided to be a working mom. Like it was something I chose to do. And why wouldn't I just stay home with my kids? Like maybe my fam, you know, my parent, my mom did. And my husband at the time, his mom did, but it wasn't who I was. And I knew that I knew innately, it just wasn't who I was. And so I had this constant internal battle of feeling guilty for wanting to do it, but knowing if I didn't do it, I wouldn't be a happy person. And then I wouldn't be a good mom. So right. I think number one is we have got to be true to who we are. And we have to be proud of who we are because we're made that way for a purpose. And there is no right or wrong answer. And it doesn't matter what other people think because they aren't you. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that as a human being and as a woman, you've got to be happy. You've yeah. got to be internally joyful exactly. and feel good about yourself. If you're going to be a good mom, a good significant other, a good child, a good sibling, a good member of society and a good leader in your business, you've got to take care of yourself first. And there should not be guilt around that. Um, and I had that for a long time. And I think that's also why I lost my way. So one thing I want to speak into just women or anybody in general, this has to be a priority. Self-love, self-care, and self-leadership mm -hmm. has to be a priority. Living in alignment with who you are has to be a priority. And yeah. then you don't have to feel guilty because what Erica said, which is living in the moment. So what I wasn't able to do was live in the moment. And the reason I wasn't is because my mind overtook everything for me. Guilty when I wasn't with my kids, guilty when I wasn't at work because I was missing opportunities, guilty, 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 shame. Am I doing the right thing? Worrying, stress, anxiety. Right. Um, am I being a good enough mom? Am I, am I, you know, how am I going to make this money again? Cause now I'm making this money. We're living to our means. So now I have to make this money because our family counts on it. So then it's like this whole back and forth. Right. And we all live in moments where our mind is taking over. Yeah. And what I can tell you is that when you're living your mind and you're not actually living your life, you're going to go in directions. You don't want to go because your mind isn't gonna take you where you as a human being wanna go. It's gonna take you where it is going to tell you and all the brain does is conjure up thoughts that are based on past experiences, mm -hmm. fears, mm -hmm. failures, and project it into the future, right? It's, so it's gonna try to guide mm -hmm. you in ways yeah. to avoid failing again or not taking this risk or not doing this because people are gonna think this about you, but none of it's true. Your thoughts are not true. They are not real things. They are completely just random things that come in your mind. They're theories. I like to think of them as theories. Right. But you, if you had a theory you were reading about, you'd go research it, right? You'd mm -hmm. go try to poke holes in it because you wouldn't just immediately believe something that you right. heard, but you do that in your own mind. You believe everything your mind tells you as if it were true. And instead we need to stop absorbing our thoughts and we need to start observing our thoughts. Take wow. them out of our mind, okay. put them on paper and question them. Is it really true that I can't be a good mom and run a business? Of course it's not. That's what my mind tells me. Is it really true that my mom's judging me because I'm working? Probably not. I'm probably putting that in my own head right. because I'm mm -hmm. feeling guilty myself about it for whatever reason. Exactly. So it's all of these practices that I've taken into place. So that would be one thing, Erica, take your thoughts out of your mind, put them on paper and, and, and question them and, and ask if just exactly the opposite could be as true. 
most of the time you'll realize yes. And then yeah. you'll go, okay, I'm living out of the, I'm living in the wrong perspective here because I'm believing everything my mind is telling me. I need to get real of what's reality. And then I need to move forward in a positive way. Secondly is when you can remove all this clutter from your mind, you can become more present. So mm -hmm. here's what was happening for me. The real reason why I wasn't feeling good about what I was doing was because I wasn't emotionally or mentally or um, I wasn't connected. I wasn't present in the moment. So I was physically with my children a lot, but I was working at the same time. I was thinking yeah. about other things. I was distracted. Yeah. Of course, I wasn't having meaningful connection with them because I wasn't available for that. It was the same thing when I went to work. I wasn't giving my clients my full attention. I was thinking about the next appointment. I wasn't doing things or operating in a way in which I was truly connected to what I was doing. That was the problem. It wasn't the amount of time I was spending with my kids. Yeah. It was the present time. It wasn't the amount of time I was spending with my significant other. It was the amount, it was the present time. And it wasn't the amount of time I was spending in work. It was the present time. If I would have been more yeah. present, I could have gotten more stuff done in work in a shorter period of time. I could have wow. had more connected moments with my kids yeah. at the moment. And they could have been for 15 minutes connected, soul to soul, present right. time that would have moved the needle forward. I could have done a walk around the block for date night with my spouse if that's all we had. And I could have made a connection that would have grown us forward. And that is what I didn't know. And that's what I try to tell people. You can do all the things. You can pour into yourself, pour into your relationships, pour into your children, pour into your work. You yeah. can do all the things if you've got clarity, priority, like you said, Erica, in your calendar, it has scheduled personal yeah, as well as business exactly. and get present figure out how to get this crap out of your mind because <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> it That's is. holding you back and distracting you and making you stressed out and thinking about things incorrectly because that's when you have the freedom to actually get present. So that's what I continue to practice. By the way, it's something you kind of have to practice all the time. Yeah. The mind is a very powerful thing. So, yes. you know, things that you can do on a daily basis to help you with that are, is really great. I've heard, um, I've heard different techniques like in the morning, you know, when, if you, um, create a morning routine where you have like, kind of like a thought, a thought dump, you write everything that you're yes. thinking, you know, th those are things that will help you clear up your mind. And then, you know, use your calendar. I have my agenda. Like I cannot, I don't know how to function without mm -hmm. it. I've been using it for, I think like the past 10 years, yes. it's because, you know, like I have a clear yeah. set of lists of things that I have to do. And like you said, now it, it doesn't it, like we all have the same 24 hours in a day, yes. but if you're present, um, you know, if you time block your time mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, this 15 minutes, I'm going to give it my all to this task. And then this next 10 minutes, I'm going to spend time with my kids and I'm going to be there usually like we're always like following the motion just going through the motions and, and thinking mm -hmm. like okay I'm with my kids but I have this appointment at two and and you know it's it, I'm I'm super happy that we're talking about this subject because today is International Women's Day and we as women you know we want to do more we want to be empowered we want to become leaders and all of that but we do have a lot of responsibilities like yeah. you said you know we are wives we are moms you know like we have all of these hats that we have to take care of so we have to come up with a system of not feeling guilty like you said you know uh, you know I'm a working mom or I want to mm -hmm. do this for myself or I'm an entrepreneur like we have to come up with a system and be authentic to ourselves like you know show up as our authentic selves if work is what make is making you happy then work, you know, if you, if you're going to stay at home, you know, to raise your kids, but feeling like there's a part of you that's missing, then you're absolutely going to hate yourself at that. You're going to resent mm -hmm. your family at some point, because you're going to be feeling like this people, this little kids, my husband, like everything is keeping me stuck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I love that we're talking about that, especially in a day like today that, you know, we're all about empowering women yeah. and recognizing women everywhere. I mean, here's the thing. Wouldn't you love your children at the end of the day to see you live your truth? Yeah. I mean, I know I've seen people in my life that didn't live their truth, that didn't live the life exactly. that they actually wanted to. And that made me sad, but it also wasn't a great model for me. Right. Yeah. So I, but, but then I, but then I fell into it. I did it. Yeah. Right. So until I became aware and then I went, wait, stop. 
I'm showing my children that I don't matter, that I right. can't even go for 30 minutes and take care of myself and my health. What is that showing them? But yet I'm telling them they should go do all the things, but mm-hmm. I'm not acting that way. I'm not being that way. You're not That's living that truth. message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Very true. I'm actually taking notes because every time I listen to you, Carrie, I'm taking notes in every room that I'm at, you know, I'm actually taking notes because it's so, that is so true. Um, And especially, you know, us women entrepreneurs that, you know, we, we want to shine, we want to grow and, you know, we want everything perfect. Sometimes, you know, perfect house, perfect this. And it gets to the point that, you know, we forget and, you know, I, I actually started taking care of myself a few years back when I said to myself, listen, I think I started with the power of now, um, that book. Love that. Yes. I love that book. And I started with that one. And then, um, you know, the four agreements. So I'm always, oh, you know, evolving. So I'm always changing. I'm always doing things where, where can I grow? And, you know, I think that we as women, we need to empower each other, help each other, because yes. if we don't do it and we don't empower each other, then I, I think that they're just, we're lost without each other, yeah. you know? Um, but that's what you're saying is so true. And this message is so powerful. So everybody, mm-hmm. um, if you're listening in Facebook live, if you're listening, comment, ask us questions, ask Carrie, yes. any questions that you have, please share it. Um, this is going to be posted later on because, uh, Carrie's here today to encourage all of us. We're all being inspired by you, Carrie. So please shoot any other messages that, you know, you want to share with us. Um, we'll be glad to hear it today. And here's one thing I'll add to that. And thank you guys so much. I'd love to answer any questions. So let me know if any are yes. popping up and we'll answer them. Um, you know, one thing I've noticed is, um, you know, self-care, self-love leads to self-confidence, self-esteem, yeah, which absolutely. leads to us being able to be better for all of, for in our, in our, in our parenting, in our leadership, in our relationships. Um, and so when I was feeling guilty about taking 30 minutes to go to the gym, which I literally, I, I literally felt guilty about that for years. I was an athlete in high school and in college. I loved being active. And then when I got into business, I kind of treated business as my sport, I think. Um, you know, that competitive side of me, that's what kind of fulfilled that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I have responsibility of my children, of my home and being a significant other, and I have work. And these are my priorities. And never one time was a priority me, not for 10 years. Um, wow. And I didn't even think twice about it. It just didn't even occur to me. But what I realized was when I I was losing, the only place I had self-confidence anymore was work because work is something pretty easy. If you, you can see wins, you can see success, you can set goals and you can achieve them, right? So it's easy to go, okay, I'm winning here. I feel good about myself. I have value here. Um, But the problem with that is I got so excited about that that um, I didn't see wins in the other places. So I wasn't seeing Mm. wins as a mom or I wasn't seeing wins in my relationship with my significant other. I certainly wasn't seeing wins with like my physical health because I wasn't doing anything there. And so when I didn't feel good about those areas, naturally we will run away from things we don't feel good about and we'll go to things that make us feel better Mm -hmm. because that's what we do as human beings. So what happened was then, my, my focus just kept getting further and further and further in one direction. Right. And it was just this, and it was slowly, but that's like everything be careful because it's slowly, slowly, slowly. And then suddenly, and that's what happened to me for 10 years. It wasn't very obvious, but it was like little tiny shifts. And then all of a sudden, suddenly one day, you know, everything else was crumbling. And then I was like, well, what just happened? And it's this lack of self-awareness that we can fall into because everything seems fine because it's, it's moving slowly. And so what I realized is I needed to figure out how to go feel good about myself outside of business. And so one thing I want to bring to the, um, to everybody watching, if anybody wants this free resource, they can find it. Um, we can put the link or if they just go to my Facebook, there's a link tree or my Instagram, there's a link tree, just click on it. There's a bunch of resources, but one of them is called your future self. And when I had this aha moment that I couldn't live the way I was living anymore, I chose to figure out how to set goals for all areas of my life. Because what I found is I only had goals and imagination for business. I had no goals for anything else. Did I ever actually set goals of what kind of mom I wanted to be or what kind of family life I wanted to have or what kind of spouse I wanted to be or what I wanted my health and wellness to look like or my spiritual growth? Nothing. 
I just yeah. was going through the motions and all of those things just being whatever happened, but I was purposeful about business. And I was wondering why am I so successful at business? Because I'm purposeful. I'm setting goals. Yes. I could do the same thing for every single area of my life. Mm-hmm. I could become the mom I wanted to become. I could become physically the way I wanted to be. I could do any of those things, but not if I don't set goals, because if you mm-hmm. don't know where you're going, how will you ever yeah. get there? Right. So this future self allowed me to set goals in all areas. I wrote it in present tense, even though I knew it was what I was going to become in the future. And I started to read it every single day. And what happened is it started to bring me back from being over identified with work and bringing me back to being identified with all the roles I played equally or as importantly. And I started to move forward in all of these different areas. And so super excited about, um, about that transformation because it changed my life. I mean, really, I wouldn't be in the relationship I'm in today with um, with my significant other. I would not be in the relationship with my boys and my two uh, stepsons. That I would not be at my best health at age 44. I would not be pushing myself physically to do things to just prove to myself and my kids and everything. I would definitely not have this business or this platform or opportunity to help other people. And so um, if anybody wants to do that, it's a free resource. I would just encourage you to figure out to number one, no, you can be anyone you want to be. Personality yes. doesn't, is it permanent? By the way, that's a book I would recommend. If you've <laughs> never read it, it's yes. called Personality as a Permanent by Dr. Benjamin Hardy. I've interviewed him a few times and it's a great book. And it stops you being stuck in your mind, just right. believing that you are who you are. You aren't who you are. You are yes. who you are today, just simply because of circumstances, how you think about yourself, how other people have thought exactly. about you, things that you've experienced. That does not mean that's who you are forever. It does not mean that you haven't started to change already. By the way, you've changed dramatically, whether you've tried to or not. But yeah. now as your power is, I can choose to change how I want to. Exactly. And that means I can then design who I want to be yeah. in all these areas. And I can actually slowly, again, slowly, but surely become that person. My journey has been years in the making. This has not been overnight, right. but at the same time, I'm a very different person today. And I think I'm more of the authentic version of myself because what happened is I took control right. over who I wanted to become versus just letting life and my thoughts control me. Exactly. And that is so good that you're mentioning that because usually people think that um, either happiness or joy comes from the circumstances like, oh, well, if only I had that job, if only I had that, um, you know, if only I was married, if only I have money, like, you know, people put all of these limitations into their yeah. own well-being and yes. happiness. And they don't realize that, you know, you have to become a full, wholesome person in yourself with that, you know, regardless of the circumstances that are surrounding you in order for you to have joy and live your authentic self. That's, that's oh. just, yeah. Right. That's it. You have nailed it on the head. I wasn't happy with myself yes. and I did not have internal joy. So I went to outside experiences work to make me feel happy in the moments because I was lacking something, by the way, mm-hmm. I also spent way too much money on material things. I mm-hmm. also felt like I had to live in a big house and have the nice car and the shoes and the purses. Yes. Yes. And I did that for many years, not knowing why I was doing it until I realized I was doing it because there was something missing inside of me. Mm-hmm. I needed to work on me and know that no yes. matter what with work or life or my, you know, I went through the divorce, I was okay, no matter what. And I needed to get clear on me and find that inner joy. Number one, no one else can make you happy, but yourself, nothing external can Mm -hmm. make you happy. So if you're missing something, if you know, I had somebody ask me, what do you do when you go through a divorce and you're worried that you're going to go meet somebody else and you're just going to end up in a second divorce? Like people have this thought and and weren't you worried because I got remarried and it's, it's been completely different. Well, what's different is me. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. You can yes. never control other people. Yes. If you don't work on yourself, nothing's going to be different. Exactly. Um, and so I just encourage people to realize they don't have to be fearful um, because they do have the power inside of them. They just have to know that. <clears throat> and so when you said everything will be better if this, mm-hmm. um, here's the, here's the thing, knowing that you, um, people will say to me, if I was married, I would be happier. Right. And I don't know why I'm not. And I should be married by now. Somebody will say that to me. Mm-hmm. My first question is, how do you know you should be married by now? Mm-hmm. Well, because mm-hmm. I want to be. Yeah, but right. you're not. Yeah. So it, the reality is you are exactly where you're supposed to be in the moment 
And so be okay, be like yes. more than okay with that. Embrace that because it is. You're trying to um, go against reality and it will create a tremendous amount of suffering. Wow. People will say to me, my child should go to college and he doesn't want to. And I look like a failure and all of us, we've all gone to college. And I'll say, how do you know your child should go to college? Well, because mm. everybody should. Right. But is he in college? No, that he right. shouldn't be in college. Why? Yes. Because he's not because it's not for him. It's not where he's supposed to be right now. And I know that because it's not what is happening. So yeah, you're, right. like, you're trying to force something and oppose reality. Mm -hmm. And 95% of our own suffering as human beings is, is created by ourself because yes. we're opposing what is. There's a phenomenal exactly. book, the work of Byron Katie, which is called Loving What Is. I would highly recommend that for anybody who's struggling with expectations, who is mm. feeling very frustrated, upset, sad, hurt, disappointed all the time. Like they're just, they're not content with what is the book loving what is, is basically the work of Byron Katie. And for many years, she was massively depressed, like almost suicidal. And what she realized is when she was the most lonely in her life, the most upset and frustrated and suffering, it's when she was living outside of her own self, when she was trying to make something be or someone be what they weren't because she thought they were supposed to be that way and you have no control over it and you're opposing reality and it's a very, very, very sad and lonely place. When yes. you can just accept what is and then work on you being okay mm -hmm. with it. That does not mean, by the way, accepting what is and not going to try to get better. I'm not saying right. people like look at loving what is and go like, they're just going to become complacent and they're not going right, to try right, to right, better. Right. No, no, no. Not, not at all. still forge ahead yeah. to be mm -hmm. the best person. But in the moments, stop trying to uh, resist. Stop trying to oppose. Get, get happy with what is in the moment and then take the power you have right now because you're alive, you're here. And you have an opportunity to go do something, go Absolutely. do that, because that's how you're going to continue in a positive way to move forward in your life. If we're too upset and frustrated, sad, disappointed, we mm -hmm. can't take the power of now because our, we don't have the mental capacity. Mm, we correct. don't have the positive energy, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love that is that. so good, Carrie. I love that, Carrie. You know, I, I, I tell a lot of people about that. Like, it's not about not having goals. It's not about, you know, not wanting to get better. It's just that you are in a place wherever you are right now, yeah. you have to be just grateful because you're there, you know, it's yeah. just, it's just coming from a, a place of, you know, gratefulness. And that's it. It's not, it's not complete being complacent. It's not about that. It's just yeah. making sure that you're working on yourself, but at, at the same time being grateful at, at, at you know, for where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And I love that, Carrie. Thank you so much, you know, yes. for all of the grateful um, recommendations that you're giving us with the books and all of that. Um, you know, I haven't read that one, Loving What Is, so I'm going to go ahead and get head on to that because, <laughs> yes. you know, it's just that it's we have to always educate ourselves, be better, yes. you know, keep growing. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, like you said, it's not with the expectation that, you know, you have to do this because society says so, or, you know, like you were saying about that friend, like, you know, my son should be in college because everybody else goes, those aren't just limitations I feel. And, you know, yes. just things that we put ourselves uh, in our shoulders, like it, there's right. no need for that. Every one of us has to live a different life yeah. and we have, and we are all blessed in different ways. So, right. you know, I love yeah. what you, the message that you share with us today. I know that a lot of people are going to love it and reach out to mm -hmm. you. So thank you so much, you know, for sharing that wonderful wise message with us. Absolutely. Yes, I mean, Katie, you know, thank Dee you so Erica, much. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. What I will say about this whole conversation, people feel like this is so kind of all encompassing of life. And what I will tell you, it is the single most way you'll become a fierce competitor in your business. I just yes. truly, truly believe it. People don't see the connection, but when you can live in gratitude, execute yes. the power of the now, uh, love what is while going for greater good, realizing that you're not stuck the way you are and you can change. Um, when you go to business to grow yourself personally, when you love and lead yourself first, all of these things are the exact reason that you will have a successful business. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just how you'll have it while you also enjoy life, which yes. by the way, we don't know how much time we have. So let's not mm -hmm. wait till retirement yes. to enjoy life. That's not what it's about. Absolutely. Let's enjoy it while we're building it at the same time. So that's my hope for all of you. And I thank you so much for giving me the platform to share my message and inspire others. It truly actually brings me a tremendous amount of energy and joy. And so for that, I'm very grateful. 
Thank you. No, we thank feel the you same so way. Much. We're going to do this again soon. Absolutely. Yes, invite me. I'll come do. back anytime. Yes, we definitely do. Um, for those of you, please uh, follow Carrie. She's in my Facebook. I already tagged her. In Instagram as well, we already tagged her. Thank you so much. Everything you said is amazing. I can resonate. This is I'm going on third marriage, and I am extremely happy now because I honestly know what I want. And yes. I am in a very, very, um, I'm in a really an amazing place. I don't know if it's my age that I turned 43 <laughs> or what it is, but I am in an age that even handling my kids is like, I am not in control. You know, they ha- they are in control of their own destiny on their own life. And whenever right. I'm talking to a client or a friend and I'm talking and I'm like, listen, it's not up to you. They're 25 years old, 24 years old. You're not in control. Let it go. In order for you to be happy, you got to let it go. And, and, you know, sometimes they look at me, it's like, are you crazy? And I'm like, no, (laughs) I am in my happy moment. I love it. It's all a perspective. You're letting them own life. You're taking your full responsibility, letting them take theirs. You are appreciating and grateful for what is, and it allows them to live the life that they've meant to live. We don't know what that is because we're not them, right? Even though we feel responsible as a parent, or by the way, this is a leadership lesson too. People you lead in your business, it's the same thing. So I love it. All of these conversations intertwine. I'd love to come back and have more conversations. Absolutely. We'd love to have you back. (laughs) Thank you so much to everyone that joined us today. Follow us at Magnet Monday for more information. You'll find Carrie's Instagram there as well so that you can follow her. And hey, guys, let's, you know, shoot for a great week this week and make sure that you work on yourself and don't and forget about the things that you cannot control. Control the things that you can. And that is you and how you react. All right. So see you next week, guys. Thank we you. love you. Bye. Have a good week. Bye, Carrie. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye, guys.